Hey, today is June 21st, 2019. This is wildlife biologist Eric Orff with New Hampshire Fish and Wildlife and this week's Nature Notes. Well, here we are rolling into the end of, of June and the first day of summer. In fact, uh, it's, uh, it's 11.50, so it, it's like the minute that summer is officially here. And uh, you never know, today is a little bit cool day. We really haven't rolled into summer here in New Hampshire. The local farmer has not cut all of his hay or silage fields. He's only cut a couple. Uh, it's been uh, slow to come into spring and, and summer. But let's also look ahead. What uh, well, What's happening this week? Well, this week I saw my first fireflies, or uh, well, I used to call them June bugs, but uh, I guess the common name is fireflies. I heard the other night my first June bug. June bug numbers when I was growing up, they would just cover a screen. I know their numbers seem to be down, but uh, June bugs are uh, a welcome sign of summer as well as lightning bugs. What else is going to happen over the next few weeks? Well, we should really think of July as toad month. Uh, here in central New Hampshire, here in Epsom, generally, you know, the toads have laid their eggs about a month ago. It takes them about a week or so to hatch, another month or month and a half to get their land legs. And uh, then off they come in great swarms from the wetlands and behind me the Sunny Brook River Meadow. And some years my lawn would be covered with tiny taut toads. I mean these toads, two or three would fit into a thimble. They are tiny, tiny, tiny toads. And, but they swarm across by the hundreds. Now my advice is, uh, you know, is your, is your yard toad friendly? You know, when, uh, before you jump on that lawn mower, Take a walk around your lawn if it's uh, July. You know, if you're in maybe Connecticut or Massachusetts, this is probably going to happen the first or second week of July. But here in uh, central New Hampshire, it's usually the third week. And, of course, northern New Hampshire and Maine will be later in July or even early August. So, uh, But the every year, the, the toads and frogs, about now and in the next few weeks, will be swarming out of the wetlands, on the land and we need to be watching for them. So take a walk around your lawn. If it's swarming with toads or frogs, well, give it a day or two for that wave to sweep by before you get on that lawnmower. Also, it's a good idea to bring that lawnmower blade up a little bit and give last year's toads, which are yearlings now, you know, a chance to survive. And in fact, when I mow, if I see a toad hopping, well, I'll let it get out of the way. So not only pay attention while you're driving at night, in fact, I had to shoot out last night uh, for about a mile and a half and uh, come back and I bet I counted a dozen or more frogs because it was raining last night that I had to swerve around and drive around so the frogs are still moving when approaching July but uh, a rainy night the frogs are still moving and they're on your lawn so you know when you're mowing the lawn pay attention don't chop them up uh, so be toad friendly and by the way when you mow your lawn don't forget to get over there and check those window wells you know, frogs this time of year and toads are on the move and they tend to hop down those window wells and get trapped. So you need to get a, you know, get a long handle dip net from your local dollar store and uh, check those window wells and, and let those things out of your uh, window wells, your cellar window wells or, or places like that that happen to trap these poor critters. So uh, free your toads and, and frogs and give them a chance. And also, you know, I was thinking, you know, with these swarms of toads and frogs coming across our lawns, Maybe July could be a pesticide-free month at your house. If you have a regular application, why don't you think about uh, skipping the month of, Ju of July when all these frogs and baby frogs and toads are on the move. Give them a chance, you know, no sense making, uh, making it more difficult for them. And, and uh, you know, it, it can't be good when they're on the move. They're, you know, frogs and things like that, they actually also absorb oxygen through their skin. So. Uh, uh, the skin is very is very delicate actually on these animals. What else is happening in July? Well, typically the last week of July and the first week of August, uh, so that's a month away, is bat time. So July is also bat month. The baby bats that were born back in May will be will be ready to fly here in another two or three weeks or or so again sooner in Connecticut, and Massachusetts, and uh, but here it usually was the last week of July that would really spike the number of bat calls when I was doing bat and wildlife control for uh, two and a half decades. So uh, the baby bats 
as youngsters are, they make mistakes and they should go out with mom out into the wild, out through the attic. But oh no, they take a left turn and end up in your kitchen, your living room. So what, what do you do when you have a bat in a situation like that? Well, put on some gloves, leather gloves preferably, get a big towel, throw it over and scoop them up and just open the door and throw them out. Let them go. And in a, you know, in a week or two, they figure things out. They're not making the mistakes ending up in your house nearly as much. So it's a couple of weeks, you know, late July, early August, where you're, where bats will be getting into the houses in, in good numbers all across New Hampshire and New England, really. So, uh, you know, we need to not harm them. In fact, in New Hampshire, it's actually illegal to kill a bat, thanks to regulations that I got passed probably 20 years ago. So, yes, you can't harm bats in New Hampshire. You can't poison them anymore. You can't harm bats in New Hampshire. Uh, you should just scoop them up, let them out, or, you know, open the top of a window, and if they're flying around, you know, shut the doors to that room so they're isolated, open the top of a window or two, and just let them fly out if, if they are mobile. But mostly during the day, you're going to find they're just going to be hiding the best they can, so you can just take a towel and scoop them up, or take a big can or jar and uh, put it over them and slide a piece of cardboard between the wall and them and throw that thing outside. So there's lots of easy and safe ways to uh, remove bats from your house. You really got to try hard to get bitten by a bat based on my 25 years experience handling bats. You know, they don't bite easily unless you really are handling them. So don't handle bats. Leave them alone. Scoop them up with a towel, use gloves, get them outside. So July is uh, toad and bat month. Uh, lots of things happening still. You know, remember our frogs are still on the move. Uh, turtles are, I've still seen turtles crossing the roads. Uh, and no doubt our, our, our other young animals, swans and foxes and coyotes and, and fisher are all on the move right now. So uh, end of June into July, uh, a lot is happening in New Hampshire and New England. Wildlife wise, pay attention. You're going to see more. Get outside and enjoy it.